Hey everybody, I want to come out here and show y'all something I've got here in the shop. Um, I make my own solar combiners, uh, combiner box with using these 200 amp switches. Uh, very strong, very solid switches and using these terminals. And I'm going to show you how I'm putting these in and the parts we're using. Um, where I get stuff at, of course, look down below the video, there'll be links. These uh, temperature controllers also that I use, they're Celsius, but you can figure them out. And these bulkhead style solar connectors. And what we do with them is we put, mount them in the box. So what we'll have is we'll have a multitude of these on each side. Now, I can't tell you or show you how to build your box. It's kind of pointless because I don't know what you're going to use as far as how many panels and all that. But I can show you and then you can stage down or up how you want to build your system using these. So you have the two different types of fittings and this would be where the male fitting would go and this would be where the female fitting would go. So if you're coming in here, say you join a pair of panels. Okay, here's a, here's a panel. And so you join a pair of panels. You take two of these panels and you put them into one 10 gauge wire. Now you take that and using your wire coming from up top or wherever you're running them from, you'll bring that down and you're going to plug that into the box. Here you have this that mounts in the box and you can mount it any way you want and you can mount it in the box now to keep the box off the wall because you want to prevent any kind of hazards you use what's called hat metal it's just, it's just for isolation and other things i'm sure you've seen this in carports well you can get this at like anywhere they have a sheetrock supply shop or you know somewhere like that drywall supply stores um finishing stores you can buy this in 12 foot lengths for about five bucks it's real good this is this here is 20 gauge it holds screws well and what i do with mine is i actually just cut two of them and i mount my box on them and that keeps it off the wall and allows you to run things behind it if you need and safe just keep it safe plus for the screws that shoot through here they won't hit anything and your box is isolated so this box here um i buy these boxes for about 15 bucks a piece so let me show you something else now in one of my previous videos, we discussed this thing. Now, I use these um, when we have a need to use them. People who put in uh, reverse grid tie inverters. So we use them uh, for RVs, 30 amp RV service. These work great as a disconnect. However, let me show y'all something. I showed y'all in a previous video, and you should go back and look at that previous video. And this is why you do not use this as your solar disconnect this guy's place burnt up okay and he got this from some place in the middle of the country that told him that man this is a solar disconnect and i don't know if you could tell let me see if i can look at it here what it is i mean you look at this it blew out in the back so that is a ge ge i've got a few of these that we use and I showed one in the other video and this caught his place on fire um, smoldered it mainly I mean it didn't literally ignite the whole building but he had a lot of smoke damage his whole garage so and into his living room now, this over here is a different design altogether and what you get here is you get something that's entirely your own build and you can size it the way you want now, me personally, me personally, I will take and run four 100 watt panels, two sets of these, and come down with four total wires of these. And when I do that, I will have on this side or on this side, it doesn't matter, um, I will have my connectors here. So I'll have one, two, three and four, just like that. And then I'm going to come out of those with um, a fuse. Let me grab a fuse up in here. There's one right there. I already have one pre-cut. So I'm going to come out of that with a fuse and I'm going to go into the 
each side and I'll mark these red or black so I'll know which ones I'm using but I'll go into it with a side here and these are big terminals every like I said everything look below the video I'll, I'll try to source every one of these a lot of stuff comes from Aliexpress you get it in about two weeks or less but that 12 gauge wire and that's plenty because it's a very short run that 12 gauge wire will handle about 22 to 23 amps so you're, you'll say you put a 25 amp fuse in there um, that's a little too much but you want to put a 20 but you got 40 amps in other words going through here capable of 40 amps and then it comes out out here this setup here the way I do it is I'll run that wire into the positive side which is this one I'll run it into its fittings these little fittings here and I'll do two of them that way so I'll have like two positives and two negatives or I'll have two positive up high and two negatives down low usually that's the way I do it. it's two negatives down low and two positives up high and the negatives just flow through and go straight to here and you could put them either way I could put this negative this positive this one positive that one it just whatever you want to do so what I'm now for this guy's build uh, he's got 1200 watts of solar and this is going to be his distribution box I see a lot of these guys take this plastic crap right here this very dangerous plastic crap kind of like that thing over there and they'll put these mount these into that that's not a solar combiner box that's a freaking joke um, this one will get warm two if you mount it outdoors be aware that it will warp I don't care what they tell you it's gonna warp and it'll leak don't mount them outdoors anyhow put them in something this one here is not waterproof not intended to be waterproof it's supposed to mount in something um, underneath a small shed roof whatever but just not out in direct weather number one reason is, is you just don't you just don't want the corrosion and you don't want a, the chance so now that's the way that runs and the way that these work people have asked me man how do you put in those bulk fittings well I can show you here is how they mount I'll pull this one up here and I'm going to set this over here to where I can set the camera up okay now the way that it works is we take the one end of the washer you know you'll see when I take one of these apart how all the parts are on these okay I'm gonna leave that one there so you can kind of look at it while I'm doing this you are going to take one part of the stud and you're gonna have a nut going down about three eighths of an inch put a washer on it and I usually go down a little past that and then I'm going to take my cap it's threaded and I'm going to take my cap and I'm going to thread it down until it comes to a stop and then I'll slowly turn that back until it just till it touches just till it touches now this is an 80 amp terminal this is nickel copper so um, I do sell these I do sell if you look at the previous video I'll look at the top corner of the video right over there look in that top corner though I'll put a badge where you can go and see that other video about DC circuits so now you have that and you see it has a place for the nut to go into and then you see that void that void right there where there's nothing touching this side has this isolator right there so I'm gonna take the isolator and I'm gonna turn it inward like this and I'm gonna mount it where it comes through see it right there it comes through the other side it actually passes through about a sixteenth or so of an inch actually it's 1.94 millimeters if you want to get real specific and then this is going to go on it I'm going to give it a little shake to where it fits get this part put back in it over here and then I'll put this nut on it here now the majority of the time I use the weld glue when I put this on so what you have here is you have the welder glue I've been using this for about 10 years and it's a contact adhesive and it's non electrolytic and it works great between metals and plastics and this is thermal plastic so it works great so now normally I'm not doing it right now because I'm still mocking this one up for a build but I'll take the weld glue and I will put it right where this joints going to be right here and I'll also put it underneath the first nut there where it touches that don't put any out here you want that to be free so we get that first one in 
and then you're going to turn this down here until it's tight using a pair of strippers like I've got with the knurl end on it, the grip end. I'm just going to grab that one and give it a little twist. Tighten it up. Now, you can firm that up. I believe that's a nine millimeter wrench. Um, it could be a 10, 10 or a nine. I keep them all laying around. But there it is there, and then you'll have your washer for it that you'll put on. Grab that washer over there and you'll get the washer here and don't tighten it just put the washer on so you don't lose it and you'll put that on now in my case i'm going to be running these staggered just like this negative on the bottom positive on the top and the reason i want the positives on the top is because i want to connect all my negatives first and then i'll connect to my positives where they're out here in the open where I can use blade connector on them, but ring connector down here. That's just the way I do it. You can do it how you want to. So you can see that it allows you to put a connector on it. And my typical way is I'll run these all down with 10 and 12, and then I'll use this type of connector on it right here. That is for eight gauge, because I'll come off of this with eight gauge. So I'll have my eight gauge coming off of it like so. And being that I put that metal right here underneath it, that allows me to run my wires underneath it and come around if I want to. So using just standard eight gauge, and this, this fitting here, it's actually good for eight and six. So I can put that on there like that, tighten it up. And these, these are very good about you know holding tight. So then you just tighten that up and there you go. You've got your connection. Of course, you'd have a same thing on the bottom here going to your negative. But this gives you guys ideas. Now, if you want to use one of these plastic boxes for something, um, instead of putting these in, and these, these here are only about 50 cents a piece or 30 cents a piece, so they're cheap. And they work well and they come as a kit. So you'll get them as a kit and they'll come with all the different connectors you need. And it's a simple process, guys. It's not anything more than like a butt connector and you pop it in there and they've got little, little grips right in here. So they'll, when they pop into the rear of that fitting, they hold in. And now in this one's case, you can put these in here if you want, but it's plastic. And I've seen this used with them all hacked all to pieces and and some plastic lid on it and sit out in the sun and they still warp so um, the best thing i can tell you to do with these is you'll go get you a metal lid and you get one that's got an entry and an exit on it and then you're going to drill the metal lid out and you can mount you a few of these in there this is good for 200 amps 135 continuous 200 amp surge you're not gonna run 135 through here. If you wanna compare it to using this thing over here, using this as a disconnect, please pay attention. 240 volts, 60 amps AC, air conditioner disconnect, okay? They make different types. This one here is a, I don't know what brand it is, this one's for a spa, but they make different types. I mean, if you want to use that box to mount these in, I'll go ahead. These are only $15. There's a bunch There's a bunch of guys that sell these online claiming they're solar disconnects. I mean, I see it from all over the country. They're coming at people. This one here, um, he didn't say where he got it from, but you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure out that's not safe. Look at that previous video, like I said, right up here right there in the corner of the video there should be a thing that you can click on it'll get you that dc information video for dc power so if you look over here there's different things you can get here is an everything automotive that comes with a whole bunch of these fuse uh, fuse links or fuse wire combos and fuses there's this where i can get them 25 uh a 50 pack basically this came out of a 50 pack so you get 25 male 25 female these over here i order them from aliexpress and i get them for like 30 percent cheaper than amazon 
these terminals here. You can buy them for me or I'll uh, see if I can find a link to where I get them at. Maybe you can get, I don't know, 10 at a time of them. But all of this is real simple stuff. And like I said, you know, if you're gonna make a comment, well, you didn't show me how to make one. Yeah, I did. I just showed you how to make one. I didn't show you how to make yours because I don't know what you got. You got 4,000 watts, we're gonna need four of these, okay, or three. Uh, if you got 1,000 watts or if you got, you know, six sets of Harbor Freight panels, well, use some common sense. Be smart, make sure you build right. Use these high temperature nylon connectors. The one, as you, as you can see, that have the full center in it. And the way that you're supposed to use those is you're supposed to have a terminal on the end of your wire to install into those. Just a tubular terminal. I don't have one handy, but it just looks like that, basically. And it crimps onto your wire and goes into there. Don't just put your wire in there. Now, that's a fire hazard. That's why these things here are dangerous as hell. So, best I can do is show you how them work. There they are. I hope I made it simple. I hope I didn't overdo the video. And it's not too complicated. There's your terminals down there. There's the negative. So these two will run to this two, and they'll run from here. There'll be four wires total, total, two negative, two positive, two fuses, fuse links, or fuse assemblies, I guess you'd call that, two of these. And in this guy's case, two 20 amp fuses. So 40 amps coming through, going to, two, to a 40 amp MPPT from here. He'll drop down, he'll come over here, and he'll have one, two, three of those. And so he's gonna have three 40 amp tracers, which I love them, they're good. If you wanna know where to get the best ones for the best price hauler, I'll put a, find a link for it. I know where the one source I get them from, if ever, direct. So if you wanna use that design, this is what you need in parts, okay? I'm gonna give you parts. Soon I'll build one complete, but you must realize that what I built is for a person that has a certain solar setup. When they sell one of these things here for like a 50 bucks, I want you to know that was $3, okay? That $3, even if you had to pay for the drill bit at 60 cents and $25 worth of that, which they only use about $8 worth, they've got roughly $12 into something that they sell for 50 bucks. Not a lot of work. Don't take much drill through plastic. All right, so guys, I'm doing my best about trying to show you what we use doing this kind of stuff. There's one solar panel that was just brought in and we've got 12 of them going up, four on each circuit. Each one of those four goes in 400 watts because if, if you believe you got 400 watts out of any, out of 400 watt solar panels, you're wrong. You have wire loss. So we're setting it up for basically about 36 amps, that's it. So 35 to 36 amps, way more than enough, always overbuilt. You guys be good.